In this video, we're just going to test how to do a V carve inlay using Fusion 360 as the CAD program rather than F engrave. But first, take a moment just to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. So, the first thing we need to do is import an SVG of the logo that we want to create and then make a model of that in Fusion 360. Once we have the model created, then we want to create the tool paths so that we can cut that on the MPCNC. I prefer to model the parts in Fusion accurately so that I can tell the tool paths to go to the bottom of the modeling and that way you don't have to tell it to go 2 mil or 3 mil deep however deep you want to do it you just model it to the depth that you want so that's basically what I did so here we're just going to check that the tip is actually set at 0.5 millimeters so we go into the tool just edit it and just check that it says 0.5 if you leave that at zero it will never end Notice on the female part, we're not going to leave any stock to leave. On the male part, I left 0.1 millimeter in the radial plane, but nothing in the axial plane, so I set that to zero. Of course, on the male part, when I imported the SVG, I just flipped it on the horizontal plane, so we get it in reverse, created a very similar model, and I just uh, made the pieces stand out that I wanted to fill in the female part so uh, it's kind of an inverse of what we already did on the female part. I post process the files right out of Fusion 360, very simple with the um, downloaded post processor. Let me use Octoprint to upload the files to the MPCNC and we're good to go. So this is just my normal setup in Octoprint. I have these buttons set up on the terminal tab. You just go in there and press the buttons and, and uh, walk you through the setup. This is a piece of maple that I'm cutting. I'm using that for the inlay. So I'm going to create the male part first. And as you can see, this is set up with a 1 8 flat end mill. Once the height is set, we can cut the first clearance path, then our switch cutters put in the 30 degree cutter, and then that will create the entire profile. Once that's complete, that will be the male part done, then all we got to do is the female part. As you can see, this piece of maple is quite thick and it comes up taller than my stop. Um, but if it didn't, what I would have done is just packed underneath it, put something underneath it just to raise it up because I knew that the cutter was going to go over the edge here. This, remember it's only cut 2mm deep, so it's not that much that it's going to cut. And if you look, it actually cut it perfectly. You can see the clamps that I'm holding the workpiece down with. I use them for pretty much every job that I do. And you can see I had to use a spacer on this one because the clamp was overlapping the stop. If you want to check out how I made those clamps, look at my video. You can just search on MPCNC clamps or just look at my channel when you subscribe. Here we can see an artifact that was left behind after the clearance. I'm not sure why it left that small piece there and nothing else. It was pretty clear, pretty uh, clean once it was finished, but that little artifact I had to cut off with a scalpel. For the female part, everything was cut with a 30 degree cutter. Remember I set it for a 0.5 tip, so the software thought that my pointed 30 degree cutter had a 0.5 millimeter tip and it adjusted 
accordingly. The actual final finished part required very little cleanup. I almost didn't have to clean anything. I just took the scalpel and took any burrs off it. The wood that I'm using for the female part isn't actually brown. That's a stain that's on it. It's a piece of recycled furniture that I cut up, starting to cut up, and using those pieces of wood. I believe it's a cherry wood, but it's, uh, it's actually plain underneath, and you'll see it in the final piece that I actually sanded off all that finish. My thoughts overall on the process, this compared to F-Engrave. I think the F-Engrave software does a lot of the, the grunt work for you. It actually figures out how to make these parts fit together better than Fusion does. I think just leaving um, some stock on the male part in Fusion is a bit of a blunt force solution. If you go back and look at the other videos I did on the F-Engrave, you'll see the outcome is very similar. I think the fit and the finish is very similar. I did have some issues on the F-Engrave one though. When I glued it together, I think I had it a little bit tilted over because I used a 60 degree cutter. I do believe this 30 degree cutter helps the parts to fit together better. So I might try using the 30 degree cutter in F-Engrave and see what the outcome is. Both parts are CNC routed and I take the male part over to the bandsaw and just cut off the waste wood so that the two parts will fit together. Once that's done, it's just a matter of gluing the two pieces together, making sure that they're held in place, and then clamping them. In this case, I put them in the vise, clamped up nice and tight, and left them there overnight to dry. And then the outcome is as you see here. Overall, I'm quite pleased with this technique. If you look closely, it looks like all the edges are nice and tight. The Definitely the maple looks better in that wood and the other wood that I used for the F engrave so that might be a little bit of a disadvantage when you're comparing the two but it's certainly glued up nice and tight now if you look closely back at the clamp part where I put it in the vise you'll see there is a significant gap so I don't think there's much wood of that inlay actually in the inlay I think it's quite thin If you made it this far, you're truly a superstar. Leave us a comment below just so let us know that you got to the end. And then of course the obligatory like, which is really important to me because I'm a fledgling channel and the likes are important, but equally important is for you to subscribe. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe. You'll be doing me a favor because it helps me to understand that people want to see more videos. It gives me some encouragement to do them. Thanks.